Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome again, brothers and sisters, to another episode in the series of Marriage and Divorce. With myself is Sheikh Haitham al Haddad, who is currently residing in the UK and is on the board of the Islamic Sharia Council of Britain and is also the founding member of the website www.islam21c.com. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We'll get straight into it because you left us in the last episode talking about a story between you and your wife. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. It is not a story. It is something that happens to me. And the way sometimes I force myself to think about things in order to fix things between me and my wife. No one should think that any couple yeah, are living a romantic life and they are not having any kind of problems. Mm. No one should think this. Now the Prophet Sallallahu with his wives, yeah, he had some issues. And one time he became angry and he left all of them, yes, for one month. For one month. Even at the end it is very nice when he went back to them. Yeah, and uh, Umm Salam, one of his wives, said, Ya Rasulullah, you had an oath that you will leave for one month and you are returning now after 29 days. See, women, yeah, pick on small things. He said, Subhanallah, a shahr, the month can be 29 and can be 30. Khalas, just leave it. Yeah, so even the Prophet Sallallahu had some issues with his wives. Yeah. And one time Umar ibn al-Khattab was telling the Prophet when the Prophet had an oath that he will not come back to his wives for one month. He said, Ya Rasulullah, you know, when we were living in Mecca, the Quraysh people are very strong men. Yeah? They don't allow their women to chat back or to talk back to them, to respond. They will just keep quiet. This is the nature of Quraysh people yeah? living in Mecca. Mm. Ya Rasulullah, when we came to Ansar here, to Medina, they are so. Their women talk back to them. Huh? And I told my wife, are you talking back to me? And she told me, oh, oh the wives of the Prophet wasallam are talking back to him. Then the Prophet wasallam smiled. Yeah? So anything can happen between husband and wife. Of course. Mm -hmm. By the way, as we are talking about this, uh, you know, uh, in Hajj in 2010, I met a person. Yeah, he's an old Egyptian man. He told me, make dua for my wife. I said, may Allah yani give her cure. He said, no, 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 Sheikh, she just passed away. Just before Hajj, I wanted to bring her with me for Hajj, but she, subhanAllah, passed away. And subhanAllah, he was so sad. He was 60-something, yeah, maybe nearly 70. So I said, subhanAllah, this person is missing his wife. He said, Sheikh, Wallahi, Wallahi, Umraha ma'alit li la'a. In the Egyptian slang, you know. Wallahi, I swear by Allah that she never told me, no. Until, yani, how long she been living with you? He said, 40 something years. I thought about, about it. I said, is it true? Now, is it true? that this person lived with his wife for 40 years or more, yeah? And she never told him no. This is, would be amazing. It, impossible. But as it happened with Imam Ahmad, he was making dua to one of his wives because he said, I lived with her for 30-something years and we never had any argument. Because this is the one important quality of righteous women in particular, my dear sisters. Because you have the key to control any argument in the house. I have to be honest and vocal about it. I know that some sisters might take it negatively, might say, well, this is yani, one-sided argument. You are always, okay, this and that. See, at the end of the day, who is the main controller of the house? Yeah? Who has the keys of the house? Who has the keys of the happiness? For the family, it is the wife. And she has all the powers we talked about. And 
See, once we say this, you know, once we say that she has the keys for the success, what does that mean? Normally, who has the key for the office? The owner. Yeah? He can delegate it to anyone. He can give it to anyone. But he is what? The controller. He says, open at this time, close at this time, do this, don't to do this. So if she has the keys, it doesn't mean that this is one-sided argument. We are explaining the power. Yeah? The power many sisters have. And they don't want to accept this. Well, they should use this to their advantage. And they should use it, as we said previously, they should manipulate the husbands for their advantage, according to what Allah Jalla wa wants. She is the queen of the house. And as, you know, many sisters do ask me, Sheikh, you spoke about the husband, yeah, according to Islam, the husband has the right to discipline his wife. Who will discipline the husband? I said, what do you mean by discipline the husband? Do you want your husband as a man to be what? To be smacked or? No, 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 but we want to sort him out. Yeah? I said, so, excellent. So you want to sort him out? Uh-huh. So you want to sort him out. Is this what you want? I always say to them, no one will change the husband and sort him out as you want, as you say, except his wife. No one is qualified to discipline the husband as his wife, even his father. You know, after you get married, the chemistry, your chemistry, your psychology, your mindset, your body, it, everything, it changes. Mm. Mm -hmm. Everything, it changes. And you will not listen to your father as you are listening to your wife. This is a reality. We as men try to hide it, but this is the reality. So, my dear sisters, use your power to change your husbands. And that's why we also say that men should marry righteous women because the women will have major impact on them. And we also say empower your wife but in the right direction because she can help you a lot and she can help the children. You know, I have done my own survey maybe non-academic survey, about those children who memorize the Qur'an. Mm. Yeah? I can confirm to you that most of the answers I got regarding why you memorize the Qur'an, most of those children, they say it is because of my mother. My mother, not because of my father. Look. And after all of this, they want our sisters to go work, clean the street. They prefer that they go and clean the street. Or she works as, a, as an IT consultant. Yeah? Or she works as a civil engineer. Or she works as a police officer. Yeah? And that is a job. But her job to look after me, to look after the children, to look after the house, to build, to nourish the future generation. Yes? And while she is the queen in her house, queen of her kingdom. If you go work as an IT consultant or as a police officer, you will not be the queen of that office. But in your house, you are the queen. Okay? And that's why there is one hadith. I will conclude this part with this hadith. The Prophet wasallam said, describing the righteous women, and he said, when the righteous woman feels that her husband is angry, she will say to her husband, my hand is in your hand, and I will not be able to sleep until you become satisfied. Yeah? This is an act of ibadah or not? It is. And by the way, women by their nature, they would like to be seen yeah, as pleasing their husbands. Yeah? I don't want to use the word masters because many sisters will jump from their chairs and they will say, what? Yeah? They like to please their husbands. Mm -hmm. So remain according to your own nature because that nature. Allah Jalla wa Ala has created you on. Yeah? And do it and you will see the impact of this on your life. So anyway, the conclusion of this point, this issue, which is try to put more effort to please your husband, has a major impact on 
solving so many problems in the marriage and avoid even thinking about divorce. Mm. SubhanAllah, we mentioned how everything is different between the, the man and the woman for a reason and it complements each other. Yes, we will, inshallah, in the second part of this, we will uh, mention quickly the last point about complement but not compete. compete. Brothers and sisters, please come back to us where we will discuss this issue of complementing each other rather than competing with each other. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Marriage or divorce? What's Islamic ruling? Solution or problem? Heaven or hell? Uh, there is a misconception. You choose. Beauty, wealth, family status, virtue. Decide what you want. Decide your choice. Be sad or be happy. It's your choice. Join Dr. Zakir Naik in Better Half or Bitter Half every Friday at 6.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 9.30 a.m. UK on Peace TV. Most countries of the world ban bullying. They fight it in their schools and universities. A lot of us are being bullied differently every single day. Some come up to us and say, do this, while others say, don't you dare. Some say this is halal, while others say, nope, this is haram. Are you confused? Do you feel lost? Join me in Umdat al-Ahkam, where, with the grace of Allah, we will learn the proper knowledge from the Qur'an and from the Sunnah, which would help stop this kind of bullying. Join Asim Al-Hakim in Umdatul Ahkam, next on Peace TV. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome again, brothers and sisters, to this discussion on whether it is better for us to complement each other or compete with each other as a husband and wife. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. See, with regards to this point, we have spoken about it in length, but I would like to summarize. First of all, okay, the husband should look at his wife as the queen of the kingdom. The wife should treat her husband as the lion of the den. This leads to the second point. Me as a man, I am married to, I'm talking about Islam, I'm not talking about the legal system. Yeah? Because the legal system, if you say I am as a man, I'm married to, they can say I'm married to a man. I'm not talking about that. Me as a man, I am married to who? Woman. A woman, a female. She, as a female, is married to who? A man. A male. That is the secret. Do your job as a female. I should do my job as a male. And let us remember what we have said before. So let us not compete, but complement each other from all angles. And obviously we cannot just summarize all what we have said in this episode. And this might be enough, inshallah, for the issue of complementing rather than competing because I want to move to the issue of divorce. Issue of divorce. Inshallah. I mean... This issue of divorce now, I'm not sure from your experience, you might be able to tell us if this is becoming more popular or less popular or if it's maybe even done in the wrong way or the right way. Yes, see, as we have said maybe in the first few episodes that divorce became a very common practice in Muslim countries and in non-Muslim countries, unfortunately. Yeah? So we need to know how to, first of all, Avoid it, and all what we have mentioned is to avoid divorce. And if we cannot avoid it completely, we need to know how to do it, okay, properly. Because doing it properly will minimize it, yeah, and we will see, and will also minimize the negative consequences of it. You know, in Britain they say there are the most two 
terrifying things. Yeah? Terrifying. Are what? Divorce. Divorce and moving the house. The most yeah? stressful. The most stressful thing. The most stressful things yeah, are divorce and moving house. Why Allah Jalla wa ala legislated divorce? Because sometimes you have to do it. So let us know how to do it amicably. Let us know how to do it smoothly. Let us know how to do it in a way that minimizes the negative consequences of it because definitely there are some negative consequences of divorce. No one can say no. There are no negative consequences of divorce. Again, we are talking about Islamic divorce. I mean, you've mentioned this now, which is good to start off with, the wisdom behind divorce. What is the wisdom from the Islamic okay. point of view? Yes. First of all, as you said, the wisdom behind divorce is to end a relationship that is not producing its outcome or to stop a relationship that becomes deconstructive rather than constructive. Yeah? To stop a relationship that is becoming destructive rather than constructive. Something that's not fulfilling the aims of the Sharia. Something that is not fulfilling the aims of the marriage, which are the aims of Sharia. So you need to end it. And sometimes continuing the relationship might lead to kind of vul, injustice, on you, on the wife, or on the children. So that's why Allah Jalla Ala legislated divorce. Okay? Allah Jalla Ala mentioned divorce in a few verses in Surah Al Baqarah. Allah Jalla Ala mentioned one verse or a few verses of divorce or regarding divorce in Surah Al Talaq. And there is a surah in the Quran, a chapter in the Quran that is called what? Al Talaq. Divorce. Divorce. And the first ayah in that, it gives us a lot of insight. With regards to the divorce. Ya ayyuhan nabiyu, idha talaqtumu nisa'a, fatalliquuhunna li'iddatihinna, wa ahsul idda, wa attaquullaha rabbakum. La tukhrijuhunna min buyutihinna, wa la yakhrujna illa an yatina bifahishatin mubayin. Wa tilka hududullah. Ya ayyuhan nabiyu, Allah jalla wa ala address the Prophet. In order that the Prophet to address his ummah, or address the ummah through the Prophet, because the Prophet is the leader of the ummah best of examples the best of examples if you divorce women then divorce them in a time suitable for them to observe their full idda and secondly wa ahsul idda count the idda so you will not be confused about the idda and then allah jalla wa in the middle said what what taqullah rabbakum See, our legal system is not a pure legal system. It mixes the legality with what? With, as they say, spirituality, although I don't like to use the word spirituality. You need to fear Allah. Yes. Because if there is, in fact, the... Yes. Is mentioned in which surah? Surah Al-Talaq. In which surah? In Surah Al-Talaq. وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِ يُسْرًا In Surah Al-Talaq. Even Surah Al-Baqarah do not uh, include verses like this. Surah Al-Baqarah, the longest chapter in the Quran. But Surah Al-Talaq, the small surah, two pages only. Yeah? The taqwa was mentioned in three ayat in four phrases. Yeah? And the taqwa was linked also to what? to risk, to provision, to satisfactions, to happiness. And this is in four verses. And the fifth one is the one that was inserted in the ruling of divorce. This is the fifth one. Okay? To show that the talaq system is not a taboo, first of all. Mm -hmm. It is not a bad thing to be done if it is done correctly. Mm -hmm. Yeah? And what does correctly mean? If it is done within the frame of taqwa. And the talaq thing can be a solution for the taqwa as well. Yeah? If you feel that the taqwa is affected by this marriage, then go for a talaq. That's why the scholar said the talaq sometimes can be wajib. 
if you feel that your life is now full of haram because of living with this wife. Or the wife feels, as in the story of Thabit ibn Qais, his wife, Jamila, she went to the Prophet Sallallahu and said, Thabit is a good man, but I am ana akrahu al-kufra fil islam I am unable to fulfill his rights. Yeah? I dislike him, I'm unable to fulfill his rights. So I'm afraid that if I continue with him, yes, I will be cursed by the malaika. So, Ya Rasulullah, yeah, let him divorce me. So the Prophet Sallallahu said, Thabit, yeah, divorce her. He told the wife, yeah, Jamila or Ummu Jamila, whatever her name, according to different narrations, he said to her, are you going to give him his hadiqa, his farm? He gave it to you as a dowry. She said, yeah, I'll give it to him. So the Prophet Sallallahu said, take the farm, the dowry, your dowry, and give her divorce. This is a fundamental hadith that needs to be addressed when we talk about khul'a. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Anyway, so in some cases, the talaq is wajib. Or going for a divorce is wajib. Because you are not fulfilling your basic rights and you are afraid of committing haram. And sometimes it can be what? Dislike. And sometimes it is mubah. I don't know whether some scholars said that it is mubah. There is a case that it is mubah. But in many cases they said it is dislike. And in most cases, yes, it is haram. So in general it is either dislike or haram. The opposite of marriage. We said the marriage is either what? Highly recommended or wajib. Highly recommended or wajib. The talaq now is either disliked or haram. haram. Sometimes it can be wajib or recommended. So this is talaq. Allah Jalla wa'ala mentioned also in the Quran, at-talaq marratan. Yes? فَإِمْسَاكُمْ بِمَعْرُوفٍ أَوْ تَسْرِيحٌ بِإِحْسَانٍ And Allah Jalla wa'ala said after that, فَإِنْ طَلَّقَهَا فَلَا تَحِلُّ لَهُ مِنْ بَعْدُ حَتَّى تَنْكِعَ زَوْجًا غَيْرَ فِي دِفَرْسِهِ هَرْ After that, yeah, then she will not be halal for him. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spoke about talaq, gave fatwas about talaq. When Ibn Umar gave his wife talaq, then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was not happy the way it was done. A man like uh, Rukana gave his wife a talaq. He came to consult the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said, no, this is considered as one talaq and so on. There are many incidents. It was practiced during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the time of the companions. Now, some people say that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam divorced his wife, Hafsa. Let us not get into this, okay? Because some narration said that he did divorce her. Some other narration said that he wanted to divorce her. Mm -hmm. yeah? It was not confirmed that he did divorce her. The matter is easy regarding this, but the key thing is at-talaq is part of our social system. Mm. And at-talaq is a means to end a relationship. Allah Jalla wa'ala wants us to learn about talaq. Yeah, Sharia wants us to learn about talaq in order to what? To minimize, to avoid it in the first place, to minimize it and to minimize the consequences, to minimize the consequences of talaq. As we don't have too much time left, I'd like to mention a quick point that especially living in the West, coming from the West, many religions see divorce as not part of their system. It's not allowed even yeah. from a religious point of view. I think the Western liberal system is making it too difficult to yes. divorce now. Yes. I mean, this should, sometimes it can be seen as a mercy from uh, an Islamic point of view. Yes. I don't know whether we have time to mention a story. I don't know whether we have mentioned it previously or not. In the Islamic Sharia Council, once we were approached by the deputy minister of one of the Western countries, okay? And uh, I asked him, why are you visiting us in the Islamic Sharia Council? He came with a number of delegates. And then he said, you are telling me that I have to stop now because this is the end of the episode. Yes, okay, so it is then. You have mentioned it previously, but I think it is definitely a good story to at least... You know, to start with maybe inshallah. in the next episode. Inshallah. Okay. Brothers and sisters, please return to us in the next episode where we shall continue on the topic of divorce. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. ما قال النبي هو الصحيح نكاح مبارك, مبارك.
There is joy, there is happiness, happiness. in this union. Let there always be peace. Allah will bless your home with light, your heart with never ending delight. Two worlds today have now become one. The road ahead is as bright as the sun. Oh Allah, keep this marriage so strong. In your hands does the future belong. Belong. Explore the options. Match the qualities. Assure the success. What happens at school, or more specifically, what happens inside the classroom? The classroom. The classroom. Good qualities of classrooms. Interactive, challenging, collaborative. 